If I say that my somewhat extravagant imagination yielded simultaneous pictures of an octopus, a dragon, and a human caricature, I shall not be unfaithful to the spirit of the thing. A pulpy, tentacled head surmounted a grotesque and scaly body with rudimentary wings. It presented a monster of vaguely anthropoid outline, but with an octopus-like head whose face was a mass of feelers, a scaly, rubbery-looking body, prodigious claws on hind and fore feet, and long, narrow wings behind. This thing, which seemed instinct with a fearsome and unnatural malignancy, was of a somewhat bloated corpulence. H.P. Lovecraft, The Call of Cthulhu Cthulhu, a massive being of monstrous appearance, a great old one, the great sleeper. Cthulhu came into existence from Nug, the offspring of yogg sothoth and shub Niggurath, the outer gods. Bringing forth Cthulhu into the universe on the planet Vul, Cthulhu would later mate with Idyar and have four offspring. Then, travelling to Earth, not alone he came with the star spawn, shape-shifting beings that, when in their true form, bear an uncanny resemblance to the Great Old One, though not much is known about them. The Starspawn worshipped the Great Old One, and it has long been theorised whether Cthulhu himself created these beings as his true offspring, or they were just coincidentally similar in appearance. Either way, the Starspawn would build the sacred stone city of Erlier, somewhere in the South Pacific Ocean. The Nightmare Corp city of Ulier was built in measureless eons behind history by the vast, loathsome shapes that seeped down from the dark stars. There lay Great Cthulhu and his hordes, hidden in green, slimy vaults. The city is often characterised by its strange shape and patterns worked into the architecture, made from a green stone unlike any other on Earth. Cthulhu and the Starspawn were not welcome visitors to Earth, however, and they would be resisted by the Elder Things. A long war raged between the two groups, and eventually, the Elder Things would retreat into the ocean after an agreement was made. The Starspawn of Cthulhu was to have access to the new, recently formed landmass of Earth, and the Elder Things were given dominion over the more ancient landmass, along with the oceans and the Antarctic continent. The Starspawn and Cthulhu were free to roam Earth, which they did. At some point, Cthulhu entered into a deep hibernation, dreaming endless dreams and slumbering somewhere within Erlie. Cthulhu, though in hibernation, was not lost to the world, and in their dreams, he was able to communicate to humanity through their evolution and development, planting the seeds and growing the cult of Cthulhu. Whether the Elder Things planned what came next or not isn't known, but the recently formed landmass would eventually sink back into the ocean. The Starspawn of Cthulhu were banished to the sea, and along with them, most of their sacred stone city, the Nightmare Corp city of Erlier. The Great Green City was now sunken into the depths of the ocean, and with it, Cthulhu. The Great Dreamer now awaits with his Starspawn, influencing humanity and growing the cult of Cthulhu until the time is right. The city itself has risen from the ocean throughout history, though never for very long, and it always sinks to the depths again. As the cult grows, as does the call of Cthulhu, they dream of the day that the great corpse city of Erlier will rise out of its watery prison permanently, and with it, Cthulhu, claiming the earth as his own once more. The secret priest would take great Cthulhu from his tomb to revive his subjects and resume his rule of earth. Then, mankind would have become as the great old ones, free and wild, and beyond good and evil, with laws and morals thrown aside, and all men shouting and killing and reveling in joy. Then, the liberated old ones would teach them new ways to shout and kill and revel and enjoy themselves, and all the earth would flame with a holocaust of ecstasy and freedom. Although we may often regard Cthulhu as evil, his ethics and morals are not of human comprehension, and thus he is neither. He does not work within the realms of good and evil as we know it. Cthulhu is not without rival. Haster has been noted to be Cthulhu's half-brother and ultimate enemy. Another great old one, a god like Cthulhu. His cults on Earth actively try and prevent the great dreamer from awakening. Cthulhu's story is not over. 
And that is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange eons, even death may die. So I've had countless comments to talk of Lovecraft and his mythos, so I thought I would explore them for you. If you're a fan of Giga, then you are likely a fan of Lovecraft. The stories are vivid and dreadful, yet beautiful. Are you familiar with Cthulhu? A widely recognised being of ultimate and impending doom, and a prominent figure in pop culture today. The aesthetic is instantly recognisable, with his octopus-like head, wings, numerous tentacles and immense stature. Will the great dreamer ever rise again? So let me know what you think down below in the comments section, and if you did enjoy this video then please consider leaving it a like and subscribing to the channel for more in the future. I've been Mr H, and until next time, I'll catch you in the comments section.